Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This week we're going to be looking at the Knights of Bretonia and how you can easily make some quartered heraldry without too much effort. Let's get stuck in. So this week, as mentioned, we're looking at these old school Knights of the Realm on horseback and we're going to be doing them in a nice red and black quartered scheme. I really like these models, they're from 2003, but I think they still hold up pretty well, though I am excited to see how they look alongside those new sculpts that GW have been doing. When it comes to quartering your heraldry, the first thing to do is to have a solid base, make sure your fingers are braced and your arms are on your table, and then gently start adding crosses all over the areas you want to be quartered. I'm starting with the shield and doing a down cross, followed by a horizontal cross. So vertical, then horizontal, you can do it the other way around if you want, but as long as you've got somewhat straight lines, you're good to go for the near future. This is a somewhat repetitive process, and you're going to see a quick <laughs> clip through as I do it all over this one guy. This is probably one of the longer parts of the quartering process, just making sure you've marked out those areas nicely. I'm also going to quickly apologise in advance, I've got a new puppy uh, not replacing Bram, Bram's still fine, don't worry, some people panic when I say that. We have another puppy, and you probably just heard him then. He's making noises, and he won't leave me alone. So here he is on the screen whilst we do the rest of this uh, marking out of our quarters. Oh, shush, stop whining. <laughs> He's a little monster. Puppy safely resecured in his crate for the time being. It won't be long, we'll get him out again afterwards. Back to the actual model making of this video, I'm continuing with the quartering scheme and I'm also dividing the knight himself up into quarters in the exact same way I've done the shields. We're also going to be dividing the horse up into quarters but that's quite easy because at the back he's got leather straps all over everything and at the front you just draw a straight line down his neck like I'm showing now. This is probably the hardest part of the quartering process if you're not too steady with a brush. So take your time and don't worry about cleaning up mistakes. After all that's done, it's time to block in the colours. In my case, it's going to be red, choosing two opposite corners to make it a quartered scheme. I'm going to be keeping my black primer as the other colours base coat. If you want to use a different colour, like blue and red, and you've primed black, then colour in everything with red or blue, and then do the exact same process here. Now, dividing up the shields was really easy, but dividing up the horse is a little bit more confusing because you don't necessarily know where you want those specific colours to be. So taking a top-down picture of a horse and matching up to a picture of a shield that I flipped, so the tip is essentially where the head would be, that designates where my colours are going to be. Now if you're confused because I'm not doing the black and red exactly where that shield picture was, it's because that shield wasn't my reference, it's just an example. My reference was the shields I have painted. That's probably a little bit confusing, I apologise for that. Anyway, here we are after coating everything in one coat of corn red, which is my colour of choice today, and then we're going to do a second coat off camera because you don't want to watch me paint the same things again. Moving straight into highlighting, I'm going to use Wild Rider Red, any other red will do, but preferably a bright one, to further divide up the quarters. It's this highlighting stage where things are really going to start to pop and it's really going to look bright and beautiful, like heraldry should be. What's also nice about quartered heraldry is you're not using the same colour to highlight the entire tabard and cloak and shield of the model. You're getting to switch up fairly often. So whilst it's a pain, it's a bit more interesting in terms of the highlighting stage. Once you pass the base coats, anyway. Next up, I'm going to be highlighting all the black with a nice grey. Doesn't really matter which one here. If you're using blue, again, highlight with a bright blue. Easy peasy. You'll also notice during my highlighting stage that the quarters aren't exactly even. The red is slightly larger, hence by the way I could highlight it with a cross rather than with little boxes. This is fine. It looks fine from a distance, it looks fine up close, so that's the easier way of doing things. Moving on to the armour, the armour is super simple and really fun. I'm using steel from Vallejo to base coat everything. This is a very dark metallic and a great place to start. The next step of doing some really nice shiny armour is once the steel has dried to use some brighter metallics, in my case dark aluminium from Vallejo again, to highlight up all the areas. This is a super quick process. There's going to be a bunch of dark recesses left by your steel coats, especially if you're painting over black, so you can just highlight up all the raised areas with this. I left this section mostly uncut just to show you how quick and easy it is. I did all three nights in about two and a half minutes, and I think it's a really good metallic scheme. To the point where I'm really tempted if Games Workshop refresh Grey Knights that I should probably dive back in just so I can paint armour like this again, because it's really fun. 
I think getting the armor right, even though it's only a small part of these Bretonian knights, is really important because they're supposed to have gleaming, shiny armor and essentially be the knights of fantasy, the knights from the heroic stories about King Arthur and the like. So get it right. It looks really cool and it's really easy to do, so why wouldn't you? If dirtier armor is more your field though and you want to do some rusty armor for some outcasts or something along those lines, I do have a video about painting really quick dirty armor in the top right now. It's not a Fallout mini, but I'm sure you won't mind, right? Approaching the end of our first highlight stage, we get to move into my favorite part of painting the armor, and that's using a contrast paint, pterodon turquoise thinned down with a bunch of water. I'm glazing this into the recesses and the lowered areas of the armor just to make it look like a nice blue-green reflection. I think it's a really cool effect, and initially I saw it on GW's artwork for the Grey Knights, and I think it was perfect for these guys, as it just makes it look the armor like has a cold steel look. Plus there's never anything wrong with adding a bit of colour into a reflective surface. You could go absolutely overboard with this, and I've seen some lovely paint jobs do it, but I kept it pretty subtle for my minis. If you're starting to end up with tide marks, then wash them off as soon as possible while the paint's still wet, because we don't want that. If you're getting tide marks, it means your paint's a little bit too thin. Now we're going to do a little bit of a time jump and show these guys fully painted a little bit later on, barring one key detail, and that is highlighting all of the armour with a nice silver. I saved this to the end because I wanted the armour to dry properly after that glazing step, and I think this is still a really important bit to add at the end as it just adds that tiny bit extra shine to the armour. Highly recommend doing this, but you don't need to. It's once again a very quick process, so after that I decided to go back in and do some freehand heraldry. Now this isn't perfect, but if you want to emulate it, essentially draw a thin sword, one long vertical line and a little bit of a horizontal line, do some little curves coming out of the hilt of the sword, and then some little dashes either side of the bottom of the handle of the sword, and then thicken out the blade at the top of the sword, and you've essentially got the Bretonian grail emblem thing. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty cool, and as I can tell at the moment, there aren't any yellow transfers, there's only like the white ones and the black ones, so this is what I'm going to have to deal with for the time being. For the Black Quarters, I use some white wavy S's, which are inspired by King Edward III's battle standard of the rampant lions on field with the fleur-de-lis in the other corner. This is when he claimed to be King of England and France. I really like this flag, and Edward, weirdly, is my favourite Plantagenet King. He's super interesting. Read about him if you're into history. Super cool. Good book to read, The Plantagenets by Dan Jones. Anyway, that's why I'm all into this heraldry and stuff. I find it really fascinating. And it's a really fun painting challenge. Anyway, after this, all I did was add a few highlights to my little free hands in a gentle fashion, just giving the impression of a bit more light on them. Whenever you do freehand at this scale, it's more of an impression than an actual picture. So those little S's, they just look good from a distance. They're not perfect, but I rather like them. Anyway, that's been another video. Hopefully you realise that quartering heraldry isn't too scary and can be done just with a little bit of patience, and once you get past that base coating stage, it's a lot more fun to paint. In my opinion, anyway. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you to all my wonderful channel members who help support this channel. You guys are absolute legends, and I will be doing another giveaway soon. I just gotta get around to it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little video. If you want to see other old world stuff, please do let me know because I'm well into it. And as always, I've been Sam. See you next time.